Welcome to Inside Gaming, I'm Brian. It's the Weekend Roundup. Did Nintendo screw up one of its biggest properties on mobile? It's sure looking that way. There were a lot of expectations for Mario Kart Tour, which released last month, but early reports are showing that it might not be living up to all that hype. Now, according to Sensor Tower, Mario Kart Tour got off to a very fast start. You like that? They did the speed Ding, boost at the got beginning. Oh, man, got him. It was the third most downloaded mobile game of the third quarter. Got 90 million downloads in its first week. Only one problem. Didn't seem to make that much money. Mario Kart Tour didn't even make it into the top 100 highest grossing games of that quarter. And it's not like it isn't monetized. It's got a premium currency. It's got gotcha mechanics out the ass, even a subscription service. Yeah, if you wanna race 200 CCs, also known as the fastest mode, it's five bucks a month, which as you might imagine, led to a big backlash online. Well, apparently nobody wanted to race 200 CCs because through September 30th, Mario Kart Tour had just under 11 million bucks in revenue. That means that of those 90 million people who downloaded it, not many people actually paid money. And that follows Dr. Mario World, which was released in July, also underwhelming. It had 8.5 million downloads. Dr. Mario World made less than 3 million bucks, despite a lot of gotcha goodness too. So what's the deal here? Because Nintendo has made successful mobile games that have made a lot of money. Fire Emblem Heroes came out in 2017. It made $620 million. Dragalia Lost came out a year ago. It's made more than $109 million. Maybe people just don't want microtransactions when it comes to a first party character like Mario. You might remember Super Mario Run was Nintendo's first big mobile game in 2016. It had 230 million downloads, but that was just a one-time fee. You paid your 10 bucks, you unlocked the whole game. It's made $74 million, but Nintendo has looked at that as a disappointment. Like, oh, we we just haven't squeezed all the money we can <laughs> out of people. As a result, we saw Nintendo go full monetization with Dr. Mario World and Mario Kart Tour, but they seem to have been roundly rejected by customers. And again, maybe it's because we're used to playing those kind of games without microtransactions all these years, so it feels gross to have to do so on your phone. Also, a subscription to play Mario Kart just feels shady. I don't know, is that just me? But I think there's something else to think about here, the control schemes. They were wildly different for both Mario Kart Tour and Dr. Mario because they had to be adapted for touch controls. This is just a theory of mine, but on top of all the monetizations, it's possible that the different control schemes just made it so neither game felt like the original. I tried Mario Kart Tour. The graphic, I mean, it looks like a Mario Kart game, but it handles nothing like one, and I played them all. And in Dr. Mario World, you're guiding a pill like up from the bottom instead of directing pills that drop Tetra style from the top. Again, it just feels like a different game. Obviously, we're still early in the life cycles of both of those games. I gotta be honest, I uninstalled both of them on day one. Really? I feel like a lot of other people did too. Huh. I feel like I remember somebody at Nintendo saying like they were going to... Ease up on it. Yeah, and uh, apparently they haven't. That is not the case. <laughs> I feel like they said psych somewhere in yeah, that interview yeah. and just yeah. it didn't... They, they, they just kind of like, they're like, yeah, we're gonna ease up on it. <clears throat> Though, doesn't it feel weird to just have like a Mario game full of microtransactions? Yes. Like Mario Kart t Tour just felt like I think gross. I th right. Well, and it, it, I think it's because we've just we've gotten so used to that property, and we, we yes. most of us have grown up right. with Mario in Absolutely. our life, and it's like oh, suddenly now Mario is is like hitting you up for money. It's like what happened, Mario? Yeah. What happened? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's like a friend of yours who like has fallen on hard times. Yeah. You're like, all right, I'll give you like five bucks or yeah. something, but I'm not gonna buy you a new house. Yeah, like I'll take you out to dinner if we need to. Right. Like I'm not, like we're not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying you a new car. I'm not paying your rent this month, right. Mario. Yeah. So I don't. But I think that's why it's it's that plus the controls. I think is why. I I'll be honest with you. I avoided Mario Kart uh, Tour because you had said some some things about it that I was like, ooh, I that doesn't sound good. Also, yeah. the fact that. Yeah, it's, it's, they have monetized everything so much. I was like, I don't trust them yeah, at this point. Yeah, I know. Well, moving on, The Last of Us 2 has been delayed. In a blog post, director Neil Druckmann said it's delaying it for, it's gonna be about three months. It'll be now out May 29th instead of February 21st. 
During the last few weeks, he said, as we were closing out sections of the game, we realized we simply didn't have enough time to bring the entire game up to a level of polish we would call Naughty Dog quality. I like that phrase. But wait, didn't they just announce the release date? That state of play was a month ago. They should have just waited until the end of the show and been like, wait, we just got word. Actually, it's been delayed. Speaking of long awaited games, Cyberpunk 2077 is due out in April of next year. It's got some big expectations. Bloomberg actually mentioned the developer CD Projekt Red in its 50 companies to watch in 2020 list. One analyst said Cyberpunk 2077 could sell 20 million units during the launch year. For perspective, it took The Witcher 3 four years to hit that mark. Then again, Witcher 3 didn't have Keanu in it. So just to give you some perspective, if it does sell 20 million copies, that would put it up there with some of the best-selling games of all time. Red Dead Redemption 2 came out almost a year ago. It sold more than 25 million copies, so. We'll see, but Cyberpunk looks great, so I could totally see that. Google Stadia is out in about a month on November 19th, but even if you pre-ordered it, you might have to wait. Google recently said that they sold out of their Founders Edition bundles. They're now selling something called the Premier Edition for the Johnny Come Latelys, but Google is shipping Founder Edition bundles in the order they received them, so there's a chance even if you got one, it won't get there by the 19th. A blog post from Google said that Founders Editions will only start arriving on November 19th, and that you might only get one on that day if you were one of the first gamers who pre-ordered. Mm. Mm. Google also told the Verge that the new Premiere editions won't have shipped by that date at all. So you're gonna have to wait, basically. But Google said that it expects both editions to be delivered within the first two weeks of launch. So you'll just have to play on one of your many other systems. Cyberpunk 2077 has Keanu Reeves, as I said, but not to be outdone, Death Stranding will have Conan? Conan O'Brien? In a recent trip, Conan O'Brien went to Kojima's studio where they're finishing up the game. At one point, the man, Hideo Kojima himself, asked Conan if he wanted to be in the game. He said yes. Then they scanned his face. There were like a million cameras around him and boom, he's in there in game cameo. We see him as a hologram talking to Norman Reedus' character. Conan has an otter on his head <laughs> that he gives to Norman Reedus that lets him swim around in the water. It's kind of like the frog suit in uh, Super Mario games. It's cool. I don't know what he is besides like, I thought he was going to be a fetus inspector. Apparently he's just the otter man. That's just weird. But it's a Kojima game. Uh, Kojima, I, I, We're like, ah, you. Ko Kojima is just, I think Kojima's just hit the point where he's just like, who wants to be in the game? Yeah. You're in the game. Yeah, You're exactly. The, I want to be in the Jeff game. Jeff Keeley's in it. Yeah. Uh, I would have let, oh, if anyone ever asked me to be in a game, I'd be like, hell yeah. Do you, do you think Lawrence makes it into the game? Is he in it? No way. Oh, man, I got my hopes up. All right, time for a five second review. They want me to pay how much for that game? Oh, hell no. All right, let's look at the games coming out next week. First up, Close to the Sun is a first person horror adventure game where you play as a journalist who is trying to save her sister. It takes place in an alternate reality where you're on board a sea cruiser operated by the inventor Nikola Tesla. It's gotten praise, it's got some similarities to Bioshock, a lot of good buzz on this. It's coming to the PS4 and Xbox One and the Switch October 29th. Just in time for Halloween, it's Vampire, a game where you play as a British surgeon in World War I who turns into a vampire. I hate it when that happens. The game explores your dual impulses of being a doctor, trying to save the citizens of London during a flu outbreak, but you gotta balance that with the fact that you're a vampire and you need to eat. It's out on other platforms. I was proud of that sentence. It's out on other platforms already. It's coming to the Switch October 29th. I do have a question before we move on. Do, do flu patients taste differently than like a healthy patient? Oh, is it spicier maybe? Uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Like a little more meat if you're having a steak. Oh, that's gross. The extra mucus tastes delicious. <laughs> Earthfall Alien Horde is a four player co-op shooter where you team up with friends or you play alone to save the world from aliens. Search for over 20 different kinds of weapons or use 3D printers to print your own, just like in real life. Automatic turrets, deployable barricades, or mounted guns, 
let you set up your defenses to channel the enemy into kill zones. Is this a tower defense game? That's what it sounds like. Battle your way through 16 epic levels that tell the continuing story of humanity's struggle to survive. It's coming to the Switch October 29th. Also in time for Halloween, Resident Evil 5 and 6 are coming to the Switch. Resident Evil 5 stars Chris Redfield and his partner Shava Alomar as they venture to the heart of Africa. They're investigating an outbreak. And then Resident Evil 6, it, it goes all over the world. It stars multiple playable characters. Both are coming to the Switch October 29th. The latest Yakuza remake to head west is Yakuza 4 Remastered. Now, Sega is remaking a whole bunch of them. They have described this as a rigorous relocalization of the game with the English scripts having been reviewed, revised, even rewritten in some cases. It's out for the PS4 October 29th. If you're in the mood for an absolutely insane strategy game that you can easily sink hundreds of hours into, Disgaea 4 Complete Plus might be your thing. I'm just kidding, I meant thousands of hours. This is guy. This is Disgaea, it is crazy. When the ruling powers of Hades are revealed to be corrupt, Valva Torres must spark a rebellion to bring them down. If you've never played a Disgaea game, just like, if you like strategy games at all, give it a chance. It's like anime insane strategy. It's out for PS4 and Switch October 29th, dude. If you've been needing a monkey ball fix, get ready for Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. One of the most beloved games in the series, it's now remastered. There's over a hundred colorful stages. You can challenge your friends and family to 10 fan favorite party games. It's out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch October 29th. Next up, this is a big one, time to vacuum up some ghosts in Luigi's Mansion 3. You'll slam, blow away, and vacuum up ghosts. Man. With the all new poster, with the all new Polter Gus G00, and you join forces with Gooigi to overcome the Gooigi is what happens after he does all that <laughs> all to right, the ghost. Move on. You got to overcome the puzzling contraptions and mischievous bosses on each floor. It's also got eight player local wireless or online co op gameplay. It's out on the Switch. When else? October 31st. And for VR, it's Journey for Elysium. This is a story-driven VR game that will immerse you in a fictional setting inspired by ancient mythology. Use your wit and skills to overcome a series of increasingly elaborate challenges to reach Elysium and obtain redemption. Also out on Halloween for The Rift and The Vibe. If you ever wanted to fix up your car but didn't want to get dirty, check out Jalopy. You can build, repair, drive a dilapidated old car on a journey through the territories of the former Eastern Bloc. You navigate miles and miles of tire changing and fuel burning and carburetor busting. Boy, that sounds like fun. I mean, it's not a, a big enough pain to maintain your car in real life. <laughs> Adapt to whatever the procedurally generated world of Jalopy can throw at you. It comes to Xbox One November 1st. That's what the official date says. The Microsoft Store I checked there, it says it'll be available October 31st. Whichever one, you Jalopy fans, you, you know when to get All five of you. And finally, Citadel, Forged with Fire. It's a massive sandbox RPG featuring elements of magic, spellcasting, building, and crafting. As a newly minted apprentice of the magic arts, you will set off to the dangerous world of Ignis. Tame mighty beasts, forge alliances, explore uncharted territory, or fight for dominance. It's already on PC, comes to PS4 and Xbox One November 1st. All right, before we go, we got a little housekeeping to take care of. Aaron, you got an announcement. I do. Uh, I'm gonna come up there. Oh, he's coming over here. I'm coming over there. Are you gonna edit this, or is this live? Uh, uh, no, I, I am gonna edit this. All right. Am I in frame? Thanks. Frame. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Uh, 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 there we go. There we go. Right. Hey, guys. There we go. Uh, hey, guys, so first time on this side of the camera. Last Welcome. time on this Welcome, side of the buddy. camera, yeah. thanks. Uh, so today is my last day with Inside Gaming. Uh, a couple of months ago I was offered uh, a really interesting uh, decision to make, and it was either to pack up and move to LA to continue doing what I do here at Inside Gaming, which is writing and producing and editing and randomly hosting, I guess, from that side, um, or I could stay here in Austin and move to a different part of Rooster Teeth. So. Uh, a lot of discussions happened. You and I talked quite a bit. We did. Uh, Lawrence and I talked a lot. Uh, Lawrence and I have become pretty good friends over the last year, so we were able to kind of talk about it outside of just a work relationship, which was nice to kind of get his professional perspective. And uh, after a lot of sleepless nights, I decided to stay here in Austin, obviously. Um, hey. Hey. I mean, you're going to be here in Austin as well. Yeah, you're I'm not, not going, going anywhere. anywhere. No. Um, but yeah, man, I, I've i loved working for Inside Gaming. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, a lot of you have given me a chance, even though I wasn't 
part of the Funhouse crew or like part of the original Inside Gaming. So I thank you guys so much for that. Um, I want to thank Lawrence, who's been an amazing boss, uh, an absolute joy to work with. Did you tell them where you're going? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, <laughs> that's for the end. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to I thank, thank you, Lawrence, for being such a great boss and challenging me over the years or over the year. Uh, I got to thank Brian, of course. Uh, when I got hired, I came in here to work for the No, and Brian welcomed me in uh, immediately. Uh, working with Brian has been just awesome. He's he's a he's a word wizard. He's so good. He works so hard. Every daily is Brian. Uh, he now writes the whole roundup. I was writing half of it. Now it's all your sucker. Yeah, this uh, sucks. <laughs> this uh, blows. So this I gotta is write the dailies and this. Yeah, I know, right? Sucks. Sucks to be you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Brian works so hard for Inside Gaming, and I, I really hope you guys appreciate the work that he does because he's he's so good. He's so good, and you guys are lucky to have him. Go on, tell, uh, him, tell <laughs> him more. No. Um, but this is it for me. I'm moving on to a different department. Uh, if you know, if you watch other Richard Heath content, you'll see me around. Uh, but yeah. I am very much moving into a behind-the-scenes role. Oh, yeah. uh, so thank you guys so much. That's it. Uh, we'll hope you guys have a great weekend. Yeah. Bye. Ah, that's way better. So Fallout 76 <gasps> hasn't been the biggest success for Bethesda, to put it mildly, mm -hmm. and yes, boy, are we in for 10 minutes of just dunking on Bethesda. I'm sorry, I love you guys, but damn it, you really stepped it's into gonna it. It's gonna be a good day. <laughs> yeah, it came out a year ago, and at the time it was ridiculed for being buggy and glitchy and kind of shitty and like the same game, just kind of reskinned, but with like weird multiplayer stuff. How uncharacteristic for a 